A very good morning to all of you. Thank you so much for coming on a Sunday morning. Many people have already said that you should not do this to us. And I'm very sorry for that. But this is the only convenient day where we can get such an auditorium. Uh, just one reminder, if all those who haven't received a folder uh, should please uh, take one. In each folder, there should be an, a very essential item that is a housey ticket. If anybody is missing a housey ticket, they can tell one of our volunteers and can get one. This housey ticket, of course, will come into play after the intermission. Okay, let's start with the first topic of the day. Two principles that we have used while constructing the program is one, be brief. Second, stick to symptomatology. How many of you have attended on a Sunday morning a medical conference? Show of hands. Sunday morning medical yeah. conference? Almost all of you. How many of you have attended on any morning of any day or any evening of any day a conference dedicated to symptomatology? One? Only one person? Two? Three? Okay. So, why this discrepancy is what we are trying to address today. We are trying to give symptomatology what it deserves. So, we start with angina and anginal equivalence. Uh, we may have this next slide, please. All morning, we have had so many technical glitches that I have lost more hair <laughs> in one day than I've had in 60 years. Okay, whenever Suraj is ready, let me know. Next slide, please. We were actually eagerly awaiting Dr. V.I. Joshi today. Today morning at 6 o'clock, his wife rang up and said that he's uh, caught a fever. We are going to try to grab him again next uh, next session because what he had prepared he titled it on symptoms was absolutely brilliant and we hope to give it to you okay so uh angina and angina equivalents we are presuming that you know a little bit of the basics even the students we are presuming that since you are in third mbbs or higher so I'll not talk everything, but salient features that you may not know. We know that chronic stable angina refers to uh, more than two months duration of angina, which is consistent in the angina distance and the angina severity. Meaning the patient says that since six months, he has chest pain retrosternal on walking 100 meters and he has to rest for a minute or two, the pain goes away. This is chronic stable angina. Two features that the patient, if he describes, you know that this is coronary artery disease, are these two. A walk through angina, meaning the patient is walking, he takes a round of joggers park. After completion of one round, he starts getting pain. He continues to walk and the pain gradually settles. This is called walk through angina. Very classic of angina. You can label him coronary artery disease just with this symptom. The other is something called the warm-up phenomenon, <clears throat> which means that the patient walks uh, one round of the garden. After the one round, he has to stop because of chest pain. After stopping, he continues to walk, and this time, he can walk for three, four, five rounds at a stretch. This is called a walk warm-up phenomenon. Why does it occur? Because of the recruitment of collateral circulation in a patient who has chronic coronary artery disease. So a walkthrough phenomenon and a warm-up phenomenon are typical of chronic stable angina. Next slide, please. Again, most of you know what unstable angina is defined by. There are many types of unstable angina. The three salient OPD complaints are divided into these three. Patient comes to you, says that his angina is increasing in two ways. One, the angina distance is shortening. So 100 meters is now becoming 60 meters. And two, the angina discomfort is lengthening in duration. These two are called crescendo angina. The other form of unstable angina is recent onset severe angina. Any angina which is less than two months in duration and is significant 
on exertion but significant at short distances is also considered unstable angina and the third of course is rest pain pain at rest especially pain which is early morning or late night in the middle of the night and pain that is post meal these are forms of rest angina what is the meaning of unstable unstable means that the patient is likely to get uh, an acute coronary syndrome because of this current angina and you have to be aggressive and probably intervene next slide please there is you all know what are red flags right you know what are red flags alarm symptoms are called red flags do you know what are green flags green flags is a term that we have introduced to tell to uh, convey to you that there are some symptoms which will tell you okay this is not angina correct for example if a patient points to his chest with one finger while describing the pain that is a green flag it relieves you and tells you that this is not angina correct okay can we go on we will come to green flags later again next slide please and what are red herrings anybody knows what are red herrings no dangerous signs are red flags what are red herrings misleading clues red herrings was basically a term originated because thieves used to leave behind fish known as red herrings for dogs to smell and they would be misled by the smell or overpowering smell of red herrings and not be able to trace the thief in detective stories like agatha christie she uses red herrings to mislead you and us to think that this fellow is the murderer while he or she is not these are red herrings what are red herrings in angina misleading clues in angina a patient comes to you and says that i got retrosternal chest pain i took my husband sorbitril tablet i am not an ischemic heart disease patient my husband is i took the sorbitril tablet sublingually and my pain got better in about 20 minutes is this angina no what is this esophageal spasm esophageal spasm also responds to sublingual sorbitril but in a in delayed fashion angina would respond within a minute or two this then becomes a red herring correct okay next slide please how many of you i need i need you to stand up uh, on this how many of you have had uh, a parent who has had a myocardial event in the last one month please stand up last two months please stand up last one year please stand up myocardial event in last one year only one person last two years we need a competitor competitor last two years okay we are an unusual population <laughs> okay a very very healthy actually either they are no more or you are taking good care of them which is nice which is very nice okay my question to you was anybody knows what this is levine sign levine sign is when the patient clutches a fist to his precordium or sternum area and says i have pain here this is a very typical sign of angina now we said here that the, we are not discussing signs we are only discussing symptoms so is this a symptom or a sign it's both right the patient comes and tells you you're not eliciting this the patient comes unfortunately many signs have been many symptoms have been called signs which we will come to again telling us that symptoms are not getting their due okay next slide please so we come to the other part of the to topic which is angina equivalence not all patients with coronary artery disease who have exertional symptoms will have chest pain chest pain of course means angina 
some symptoms will have equivalent symptoms of angina and what are these anybody breathlessness is one example sorry profound weakness can be a symptom of acute myocardial infarction which would be an infarction equivalent palpitations is unusual as an giddiness syncopal episode but the most sweating with the most important anginal equivalent is dyspnea correct the most important anginal equivalent is dyspnea so if a patient says that he how do you differentiate this dyspnea from dyspnea of say respiratory disease if the patient says that he takes one round of the garden gets breathless without chest pain and stopping for one minute completely relieves him of breathlessness and this breathlessness is not associated with cough or wheezing this is fairly typical of an angina equivalent who who which patient get no pain and some equivalent instead all those patients who have autonomic dysfunction typical examples are diabetics and the elderly these two groups will typically get symptoms which may not be pain okay do we have another slide yep anybody who else whose phone is on please stand up okay uh okay all uh, we have for every lecture we have one faq faq is frequent audience question for us yeah this frequent audience question is based on this all those who are carrying two mobile phones in their pockets please stand up purse or pockets please stand up please stand up yes please stand up you'll have to stand up thank you so much for standing up yes two mobile phones okay please stand up if you can if you can we are asking you a quiz question okay all of you know about metabolic syndrome right metabolic syndrome is a multi system uh, multi disease problem i want you to tell us what is cardiac syndrome x i'll give you clues in cardiac syndrome x the patient has classic anginal symptoms patient has an abnormal stress test which other feature defines cardiac syndrome x anybody hey you should buy two phones first okay no he he gave away the answer normal coronary you can please sit normal angiogram in a patient with typical angina in a patient with abnormal stress test is known as cardiac syndrome x this is supposed to be due to a micro circulatory problem so the epicardial or the large vessels of the heart are not affected there is no atherosclerosis or stenosis instead there is intramural or intracardiac muscle vessels are probably uh, uh, causing the ischemia so that is metabolic syndrome x next slide please no before thank you i have one more thing last thing uh as i said we have had uh, some stress in the morning and i i want you to relieve my stress so i'll i'll i'm asking students how many students here medical students interns oh, wow many all our students yes even me but college students okay the students i i want you to be divided into two groups guys and girls okay the guys have to say yes yes when they have to and the girls have to say no no which is the usual thing right <laughs> okay so the guys can i have a rehearsal 1 2 3 yes. that was not a very good yes <laughs> but yeah and the girls 1 2 3 no ah they are vehement <laughs> okay i am going to describe as a patient a symptom which is either angina or not if it is angina the guys will say yes yes if it is not angina the girls will say no no and if both say together we will decide okay so your first statement by a patient is 
I get chest pain on climbing one floor of a mall, but don't get any pain on climbing four stories of my house. Do I have angina? Okay, so this is angina, okay? This is angina because anybody who's used to the exercise that he does on a nearly daily basis will not get angina with that exercise. Any unusual exercise will cause pain. This is very important. So you will ask the patient two, three times. Gharpe nahi hota hai, mein char maale pe rata hoon, mujhe kuch nahi hota hai. Railway ka pul aadha chadne pe ruk jate ho kya? Is the question that you have to next ask. So that is angina. Your next question. Again, remember, yes, yes, no, no. After working out in a gym for about an hour, I get precordial pain that radiates to my left arm and the back of my neck. Do I have angina? No. Radiation to the back of the neck is a strong green flag. Strong green flag, meaning if there is pain radiating to the back of the neck, you do not have angina. And why is that? We, that comes to the basics of anatomy. The heart is supplied by certain nerve roots. Radiation will occur only in those areas where those nerve roots also supply. So the heart ka radiation will occur in the anterior chest from the lower jaw to the upper abdomen, much above the umbilicus. In the back, it will spare the neck, it will spare the head, and it will occur only in the thoracic back. So radiation can sometimes help you. What is the typical radiation of heart pain? Radiation? Arms. Which area of the arms? Any specific area of the arms? Ulnar, ulnar side? More of arm or more forearm? More forearm where the lower cervical C7-8 uh, supply, lower part of the arm, ulnar border, C8-1 especially, that is a typical area of radiation of pain. Can you get pain only in the radiated area and not in the retrosternal area? Yes. yes, you can. So if there is exertional pain in the arm, you have to be very careful in eliciting good history. Because many people will diagnose cervical spondylosis where it is actually angina. Okay, next, yes and no. When I shave, I get retrosternal pain which resolves almost as soon as I stop shaving. Do I have angina? Yes. Shaving is a peculiar activity. Any activity which involves the hand going above the shoulder level, including combing. Combing is a little quicker for men, but if uh, combing occurs in women and they find chest pain while combing, men while shaving, this can be angina and you have to be careful. Jab main tez chalta hoon, to mujhe kabhi is taraf dard hota hai? Kabhi is taraf dard hota hai? Do I have angina? Why not? It's on walking. It's on fast walking. Very important is that in one person, the location of pain remains constant, right? It does not change from day to day or month to month. It can, however, disappear. When will angina pain in a previously anginal patient disappear? If the area is infected, if the patient develops autonomic neuropathy due to related diabetes. Correct? These are the two situations. Or if the patient's ejection fraction becomes so low that his coronary requirement of blood decreases. Correct? Okay. Okay, I think uh, I'm, I have overshot my time limit and uh, I will end here. Okay. Thank you so much for the uh, lecture, uh, for the patient hearing.